Hey, this is Troy Swingin' here. Welcome to the Online Prosperity Show. Today, I'm gonna show you a little bit about me and what it is to actually find hidden assets and uncover different things in your business that can bring you forward in powerful ways. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, we've got none other than Troy. Troy, how you going, my man? Great, Prosper. Thanks for having me on, man. I really appreciate it. Great stuff. Now, Troy can actually show you what's possible. He is uncovering assets that are hiding in your business that you may never thought were possible. Now, among many things, uh, first and foremost, Troy is actually a marketing and branding consultant, and he has extreme unique ability to solve any problem that you might actually have. Now, Troy, did I say that right? Yeah, you did. You nailed it. <laughs> Great stuff. So Troy, I know you're on holiday right now. You're in Bali. You're enjoying life since December, but I had to drag you out of your holiday for you to have a chance to speak to us today. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> we actually work harder out here than we do back at home. <laughs> <laughs> so so tell, tell, us, tell us a little bit about your now lifestyle. You're in Bali, enjoying the life. What, what, what's happening, Troy? Tell us. Yeah, well, basically in December, my girlfriend ended up coming out here, and I only anticipated to come out for a couple months. And then we were living in Vancouver at the time. From there, she moved out here, and I was like, yeah, I'll come check it out. And then by the time we got here, everything's really great here. Um, so we had no desire to actually just, go back so now i think actually my flight yeah my flight was booked for the 28th to go back it's now march 6th so um yeah i'm staying until july it's uh, it's pretty great here the internet it's been a little dodgy a couple of days for us to find fast internet but once we did we locked down a place with some really good internet and we're rocking and rolling the adventure is great um Time zones are a little different. Uh, I don't know what time it is on your part of the world, but it's Monday where I am, and I know it's Sunday where you are right now. So time zones, time zones are a little different to get used to. Um, other than that, man, it's uh, there's a lot of adventure, a lot of great food, some cheap massages, and uh, some great connections. Now you are actually living what is the internet lifestyle, a lifestyle that a lot of people really uh, want to that you can work anywhere in the world and as long as there's an internet connection and you're with the people that you actually love and respect. How did yeah. you create that to be a possibility? That's a bit of a longer story, but we can dive into that a little bit. So I guess I'll give you a quick little backstory of like where, where everything came from because I mean, I truly believe that you need a foundation, a really solid, solid foundation to skyrocket off of. So back in 2013, I was running a drywall company, an interior contracting company. I had about 15 or so people working for me. Um, at the time, I always wanted, I was always searching for more. I always wanted really to just do something more than what I was doing instead of just erecting walls and making, making buildings look pretty and whatnot. So we ended up picking up a big contract. A contractor offered me to flip an entire an entire renovation suite, I guess, in a building. So it was about 25 or so suites and I was 23 at the time and I was like, holy man, I was like, this is quite the, quite the big deal. I think it was like a $220,000 bid and I was like, wow, this is a, this is a job. So we, we took it on, everything went well until the end. Um, I ended up sending them the last invoice for the job, which was about $90,000 and they refused to pay it. So we had payrolls of upwards of 15,000 every two weeks or so. So by the time I fought them and ended up getting my money back, um, I found myself completely broke and almost bankrupt. So that was quite the experience. Um, from that point in time, I guess my feeling of desire and wanting to get out of the industry was now even stronger. And I was kind of in, I was kind of in a tighter place because I was like, holy crap, now I like really have no money. I put all my life savings into it. Like I had about 25 grand that I dumped into the project just to get everything started up, lost it all. And then I was just searching for about a, maybe six months or so. I was just searching, listening to podcasts, went and started diving into personal development. Um, and I ended up coming across, ended up coming across, uh, fellow on LinkedIn 
and I read a couple of his articles and I was wondering like, what the hell is this guy up to? So from there, me and him ended up, uh, I ended up getting in touch with him and I just wanted to know what he was up to. And basically he was, uh, he was running a consulting and coaching business. So he ended up getting me to read the four hour work week before we actually ended up talking in person. So I read that book. We met up for coffee this one day and he ended up selling me a coaching program. At the time, I really I didn't have the cash to make it happen whatsoever, but I knew that I had to make something happen. Um, so I picked up a bunch of different side jobs and whatnot, scraped everything that I possibly could together, ended up working with this guy. So from that point in time, it's a little bit of a drawn out story, but uh, I think it's important because a lot of people say, well, now I'm living the dream and you can too. But one thing I truly believe in is really cutting out all the bullshit. Like you, there's no get rich quick schemes. They don't actually work. They take actually a lot longer because it's not going to work out what you're sold on. So from there, me and me and uh, my coach at the time, we ended up starting a society called the Young Entrepreneurs Society. Um, that blew up pretty. That blew up pretty well. We have about nine thousand people online. So we did local events for entrepreneurs for probably about two or three years or so. And then uh, I, was still, I was still operating a contracting business at the time, but I was spending almost every minute listening to marketing trainings, listening to personal development. Um, they, I ended up working for a company, actually. I ended up getting a job after everything went awry. A company was paying me about 30 bucks an hour. And I mean, yeah, obviously that sounds a, a lot higher for the average person trying to get out of their job. But I mean, I had the skills acquired at the time to be able to make that essentially so but the great thing about that is I was able to pop in headphones and get paid a great wage to learn for I think it was almost about a year or so I worked for them and we were in a private bank or whatever that not many other people could get into so there's not not much safety that you really had to worry about I could just pop in my headphones jam out to some good uh, good trainings all day long and get paid for them so I mean hey <laughs> um, so I did that and honestly I was always on the fence for about three or four years dabbling in marketing dabbling in drywall I never really wanted to get rid of that safety net so with all of this um, I ended up meeting my beautiful woman that I'm with now in the Young Entrepreneur Society so we met online um, two Christmases ago we went to Florida together and uh, we traveled around Florida for about three weeks or so fell in love and then I ended up coming back to, cause I was from central Canada from Winnipeg and she was from Vancouver. So I was in central Canada and this is this. And I guess in the times probably like two years after 2013. So I was in central Canada, she was in Vancouver and then we did a long distance relationship. And then finally in, May of last year, I decided to book a one-way ticket to Vancouver. Um, I said, screw it. I got rid of all my contracting tools, and I booked a one-way ticket uh, with my backpack and my backpack, my laptop, and a suitcase and four boxes, and I moved my ass out to Vancouver on a whim. I didn't have a ton of cash at the time, and I made it happen. And what, what I think the, really, the big thing that a lot of misconception people have is to really live abroad, you need to have million, not millions of dollars, but you need to be rolling in it. But if you really set up your lifestyle, it's actually a lot more cost efficient out here. Obviously, there's more, more amenities you can get, amenities you can, you know, you can indulge a lot more for a lot cheaper, so you can spend the same amount of money. But my misconception at the time was that it was going to be almost impossible to live out here. But it's actually almost, if you compare apples to apples, we're actually saving a little bit of money by working out here because it's freaking summer all the time. Um, it's beautiful. Uh, massages are like 10 bucks. So it's like if you got a pretty, if you got a pretty stressful day going on. Um, so basically, back to the story quick. I'm almost wrapped up on it. I booked a one-way ticket out to Vancouver. Then in December, we ended up coming out to Bali. Then from there, I mean, that's, that's the rest is kind of history. But I think the biggest lesson is like putting yourself in a position that you can go all in. Um, because a lot of people are kind of playing 
half half the toes in the water and I know I was for many years my toes were kind of dipping in the water I'm like well I can't leave my safety net well I don't know but really booking that one-way ticket and putting myself in a place where it's like you have other choice to make this happen I think that was really powerful for myself yet I truly believe you do need to have the skills and strengths like don't just do that willy-nilly don't just like book a one-way ticket somewhere and not having any skills or any strengths because you're going to put yourself in a bad place. But I really think when you do have the skills and the strengths and you're just about ready to do it, go all in, jump in, make it happen. Because I mean, when you put yourself in that position, you're going to do things that you would have never thought that you could do before. Mm. So obviously, Troy, that's, that's a remarkable story from like 23, you owning your own business and people not paying you up. The people that are actually yeah. watching this show right now are probably where you were at, at that age. You know, they're in a dead end job and yeah. maybe their boss is probably not paying them or they own a business that is literally going nowhere real fast. Yeah. Now, yeah. you mentioned that you came across a mentor or somebody that then shifted your way of thinking. Were you in any way proficient in any of this marketing stuff or did you actually have to learn as you went along? Running a business definitely helped me because I've been running my business for about at that time when I was 23 so 18 19 20 mm -hmm. so at the time I've been running my business for about five years right. so having the business skill sets definitely helped the people skills and the interactions but understanding marketing at the time itself I really didn't understand it until one, once I started diving into it it's like oh that's what I did wrong so I could really reverse engineer like everything that I did wrong in my contracting business I could really take the new marketing techniques and put them into there. So I think, I think that definitely helped, definitely helped collapse the timeframes a lot. But I mean, even still, I think anybody can really, at the end of the day, anybody can learn what they really want to learn if they put the energy and effort towards it. That's, that's what I wanted you to say there, that you, know, yeah. you can always learn something new. Because I get a lot of people that, um, uh, some of my students or people that are aspiring to be digital marketers saying, oh, what if I don't know how to market? Or what if I don't know how to you know, do Facebook ads? You will learn. So you did yeah. also mention that most of this uh, movement was from the Team Ferris book, The Four Hour Work Week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other books that you might want to put to the table that might also help somebody who's starting? Um, if maybe that you can think of at the top of your head? Well, see, the interesting thing that I find a lot about marketing and different things, and a lot of people do end up coming to me because they want to make more money. But right. it's funny because I end up, the biggest thing is I end up shifting their mindset. Um, it all has to do about the way they think about things. So. Yeah, Eugene Schwartz. Um, I'm really my main focus right now is copywriting because I think copywriting is quite the skill that if you have a cop a skill in how to write copy and write words that sell, um, I really believe that's one of the strongest strengths that you can actually understand in marketing. So Eugene Schwartz Breakthrough Advertising. Um, it's a pretty hard book to find. Uh, it's about 500 bucks on Amazon if you want to find it now. It's hard. It's challenging. Um, I know. Brian Kurtz bought the rights to it. So if you really want to find that book, uh, contact Brian Kurtz on Facebook. Uh, he has the rights to Eugene Schwartz's book now. What else? There's so many different books along the way. Um, anything Jay Abraham. Jay Abraham's a big, uh, he's basically my digital grandfather. So uh, <laughs> I've, uh, <laughs> I've studied a lot of his work. Um, who else? Seth Godin, anything by Seth Godin. Anything by yeah. Seth Godin, yes. That's about it. I think those, those will cover them. I could overload you with books all day long, but uh, I think those, that's a good uh, pick right there. Great stuff. Okay. So just so that the listener also gets context, now they've known where you came from. They've known what inspired you. We want to know what it is that you're actually doing now. And yep. we take them on a journey. After that, we want to know what it is that you continuously do and pretty much yep. um, you know what you can then encourage them so stay locked in just in case you know you're enjoying this show this is troy and he's about to tell us exactly how he works in his agency at the moment the service that i provide that is my main source of income basically 
my biggest thing is when I was operating my construction business, if I would have had somebody consulting me at the time and really showing me like the things that I shouldn't do and the things that I should do, I would have saved myself probably hundreds of thousands of dollars of lost time, headaches, pain. So I really believe right now I'm working with mainly service businesses, uh, consultants, I'm working actually with quite a few different industries. I'm working with fashion designer and whatnot right now. The biggest thing is I help people find new opportunities in their business that they could be making more money in. So essentially there's a lot of things that we as individuals will overlook when we're running our business full force. We have tunnel vision. We're going straight forward. But when you have that outside perspective with somebody looking in, uh, I can basically pinpoint how to optimize what you're doing, make it, make your sales process more improved, make your referral process more improved, your way that you're getting clients currently more improved. Um, I think that's, that's my main focus right now is really just going in, finding the hidden opportunities and assets in somebody's business and really exposing them to themselves and really just giving them the light and the guidance. I think a really big important thing to remember and anything that you're doing, even if you're listening right now, is oftentimes when we invest in something, we take action on it. If you're just getting a bunch of information for free, even myself, I've gotten tons of free information in the past and I never really took action on it. So there's this funny thing that happens when we put our wallet on the table and actually invest in something, we actually start taking the actions that we need to take. So I think that's a really big thing with the clients that I have. I give them the tools that they need to get what they want but the fact that they've actually invested and put their hard-earned money towards it, they actually now are motivated to take, to take the actions. Whereas a lot of people too, like I think a lot of coaches actually hurt their clients by not getting them to pay up front and starting to teach them and do other things. Because to be completely honest, if you're not invested with your wallet, the, your level of commitment is next to none. So I think that, that's a really big thing with the, what I do is finding hidden assets basically in people's businesses, um, help them optimize everything that they're doing and really just make them increase their import, uh, increase their performance and really make them more effective. So you, you've p pointed to us quite a lot of characteristics there that obviously you've got to be continuously educating yourself. You've got to be relentless and just, you know, enjoy the, the small things in life. Like you enjoy your massages there. So what, yeah. um, <laughs> What is the one sort of characteristic that you can say you believe every sort of digital marketer should possess, okay, um, for them to actually at least succeed or scrap the surface in this industry? Well, I think there's in two different lights, uh, resilience, like obviously continuously going forward. I mean, since I've started, I've been kicked in the face many times. It hasn't been all, it hasn't been all rainbow and sunshine and all that. So persistence and resilience to keep going forward because everything that you're doing now is going to change within a year or so. Um, I didn't expect to be living out in Bali this year. So, I mean, that's just things, the series of events that keep continuously happening. As long as you stay on top of your shit and keep going forward, pardon my language, um, as long as you stay on top of it and you keep going forward, I think just resilience and persistence. Um, another thing, too, that I think a lot of people undervalue is amazing customer service. Obviously, in your journey, you're going to have clients that can be a pain in the ass. Yet, at the same time, to always so like being mindful of the clients that are a pain in the ass and also letting them go, cutting them loose because they will drain your energy. But also to really providing at the highest level that you can provide compared to your competitors because those clients that you currently have right now are your best source of revenue for long term. Like it costs you a lot more money to constantly acquire new clients. So, I mean, really understanding that keeping the life long of a client is more beneficial to you than picking up two or three new clients, like continuously bringing them down the cycle of the line of what you're doing instead of just serving them. And then when, you know, something didn't work out and it's like, okay, see you later, or even just serving them and it all worked out and it's like, okay, see you later really understanding that what you're doing is you're playing a long-term relationship game. Um, you're just building relationships with people and you're essentially at the end of the day, the reason they're coming to you is for you to make their life better. Now, obviously you're in Indonesia right now, uh, Troy, um, yeah. just yeah. in case not, not, not to be dramatic or anything, 
there's going to be a lot of floods and then you lose everything. You lose your computer, you lose your contacts, <laughs> you, lose, you lose all the books that you read and you have to go on and start all over again. Where would you start? Do I have all the knowledge that I have now? You have the knowledge, but you don't have the contacts. You don't have the laptop. You're just going to start all over again. Where would you start? Yeah. Um, I just go into service businesses. Um, I'd show them the holes and the gaps and the leaks they have currently in their businesses. Um, I'd expose it to them. I'd start building a relationship with them, going up for coffee, whatever. I don't know if I have any cash or anything. Um, but just building those, <laughs> building those relationships um, and really just showing and displaying the value and skill that you have to somebody. And honestly, even going in, obviously, and showing that skill sometimes may not turn into dollars right away. But just showing them and building that relationship. I mean, I've had clients in the past that uh, we've got onto sales calls. Six or seven months later, they're like, okay, hey, ready to pull the So it's like it's planting those seeds. The, the seeds that you plant now is the harvest that you reap later. Um, I think that's a really big misconception for a lot of entrepreneurs that they're just like, oh, I want these clients now, blah, blah, this, this, and this. And it's like, well, what were you doing like three months ago? Like, were you connecting with people? Were you contacting people? And it's like your three months that you did three months ago is going to be what your now future holds. So I think planting those seeds on a consistent basis, um, meeting up with business owners that are operating in an area that you're operating and also to finding businesses that are making money um, because money's in the money. You don't want to try and serve a business that isn't making that much money because they just don't have money to invest because there's not, it's not a huge, industry um, if you work with an industry that makes a lot of money I mean you're gonna be happier they're gonna be happier everyone's gonna be happier um, so I think really being diligent to that too I think that's a great answer very good very good because the person that's watching right now you are probably really starting and you don't know you don't have the connections that a lot of people have but you have to be creating relationships as Troy says, Absolutely. so that, you know, those relationships will, um, you know, culminate into something three months later. Okay. Now, Troy, it's you been, have been, been absolutely fun. fantastic. I know you want to go back to your massage or whatever it is that you're going to spend the rest of it <laughs> in Bali. Um, if maybe somebody was watching this and was really, really touched or first maybe by your story or about what it is that you're doing. Um, how can people get a hold of you? I know you're on holiday, but somebody might be <laughs> interested in uh, getting to know a lot more about you and they can learn a thing or two from, you know, your, your experience in, in this whole digital marketing space. How can people get a hold of you? Yeah, the majority of my content I post is on Facebook. Um, I post quite often on there and I have a couple, <clears throat> couple different groups. Actually, that's how you and I met. Um, so basically, yeah, connect with me on Facebook. Um, you can check out my exclusive branding agency website. I'm going to be re-updating that bad boy right away. But honestly, I think just on Facebook, just connect with me on Facebook, reach out, say hey. Um, if I have a minute, I'll reach out and say hey back. And yeah, that's about it. Follow me on Facebook, check out my content. It's going to always be there. I do live streams every other day and yeah, it's there. Great stuff. Obviously, while you're in Bali there, you're working, you're creating and you're inspiring. Okay. That's the reason why we got in touch. You know, I didn't even know you were, you were away. I thought you were still working. So what are you also doing just to ensure that you continuously develop as a person, as a digital marketer, just so that, you know, whoever is watching knows what to expect of Troy in the future? Absolutely. Well, I'm invested in a couple copywriting courses right now. Uh, two different ones, actually. Um, so there's that. Uh, I just hired a coach for a year this year. Um, so he's going to be coaching me for 12 months. So that's great. Um, he runs a couple multi-million dollar businesses. I think, honestly, that's about it. The next, next six months, my goal is really to wire down copywriting and advertising. Um, I'm not too bad at it. But I mean, if you can write good sales copy, you can essentially write yourself paychecks. And you can go into any business and just pretty much rewrite their copy and their business will change. So actually today um, I have a meeting at lunch with a company that's making, this is interesting about the last question, sorry, but the touch points that you constantly make, those are the people that are going to turn into clients. Um, I met with a company out here. They're, I think they did 150 K last week and, and 
the touch points of me just constantly getting in touch with them and just being there and being relevant and being top of mind. Um, we have a meeting today later on to see if I can take over actually all of their copywriting. Um, we're going to be doing an intro. Yeah, we're going to be doing an intro meeting plus a percent share. And uh, I mean, that's a pretty, that's one of the gigs I've been actually looking for for the longest time is a base fee plus plus commission because then I get paid on performance. If I don't perform, I don't get paid and I'm very confident that I can perform. So, I mean, if they're making 150 K every, every week or so that can turn out to be great dollars for myself. So I think copywriting for me, that's where I'm going to be at uh, video. I think that's just, I'm going to be really working on my storytelling and just effectively communicating to my market on a lot deeper of a level and helping others communicate to their markets on a lot deeper level. Well, thank you so much. You have a compelling story. Your future is so bright. I think you can even see into the next time zone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I would really, really want to take this opportunity to thank you so much. Obviously, like I keep repeating, you're on holiday, but you're still working and you live in the lifestyle that a lot of people really to envy. So Troy has mentioned how you also can uh, get in touch with him and just, you know, figure out ways at how he's doing and learn a thing or two from him. And if you also going to be learning, I will put down the uh, links at the bottom. Um, do you have any last words there for me, Troy? Just keep going. I made a post actually about this yesterday. Uh, some of your darkest times are some of your best learning lessons. Um, it's times for you to really reflect on everything that you're doing and actually when you go through the darkness and you can come out on the other side, that's when you can actually lead others to the mountaintops. So I really think that's something to always remember that the dark times that you may be going through or you have gone through in the past, they do end, but you also too do need to reach out for help and really start bettering yourself because you can't get it. You can't get through this alone. Like you, this whole game, it's all relationships. You can't do it alone. It's every single thing about entrepreneurship is you just rapidly building relationships and maintaining them. That's about it. Wow. Great stuff. I, I hope that was recording. <laughs> <laughs> Some really good nugget there, especially the relationship building um, as you can't really go far. I'm also happy with the relationship that we are solidifying here. I will get to learn a little bit about you and also will learn a little bit about me and the group. And thanks for, for invitation there. So yeah. you've been watching this and yeah, has just given us wealth of value regarding where he started, where he is, and where he is going to take his business to. And congratulations on the business that you just signed up. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Great stuff. So don't forget to tune in on to the next episode where you are going to learn how to grow, market, and scale your own business. And we'll be talking to professionals like Troy that have been there, that are in there, and that can share a thing or two um, you know, to help you market, scale, and grow your business. Thank you so much, Troy. And Hopefully, we get to catch you on the flip side. Enjoy the rest of your day, sir. <laughs> Live long and prosper.